out to be me, you know? You never knew how to rely on others. That's your weakness. And you don't get another chance. Fuck, man. She's the queen. I pitched her um, before I wrote the movie at all to uh, to Elizabeth, the actress, plays her. As I said, you know, we should do a movie that's you as a rock star and a mother and an addict. Finding the character was realizing that she has this kind of split personality. She's, when she's on stage, when she's being famous, she's Becky something. And when she's with her family and her child, she's Rebecca. And once I realized that the character was kind of of two minds, then I knew exactly what the movie was. There's no dialogue improvised in the whole movie. Very specifically on this one, it's exactly as scripted. And every actor, when I met with them, I you know, basically only wanted actors in the movie that had some form of theater experience because I wanted to treat the script like a play where you're not improvising. The improvisation comes from the performance, the physicality. Beyond knowing all of the lines, all I said to the actors was, now you have to find where the performance is. I don't know if these lines are screamed or whispered. And I don't know if they're said in anger or in disappointment, but I know that they're as written, but now you need to find the performance and the physicality. You can go anywhere you want in the room. We'll have rehearsal time. We're both thinking generally for the first time during a rehearsal, what are we, how are we going to do this? We did a lot of scouting on this. So he and I were very familiar with the locations and a lot of the locations were built to my specifications of what the shots needed to be. But really it was not until you'd watch the actors do it that him and I would just decide, okay, we're this, and then we're gonna go this way, and then we're gonna, they're going to run out of the room, so we're gonna need to be in the hallway to catch them, but then we're gonna go back into the room. We're coming up with all that stuff while the actors are coming up with their ideas as well. And then accidents happen while filming, but something like the recording studio sequence with a huge reflective pane of glass in the middle of the room, that's the most precise, planned out, specific thing we've ever done. Because with a huge mirror in the middle of the room and a giant dolly, there's no room for not knowing what you're doing. Every inch has to be considered when you're cutting from one side of the glass to the other and you're moving a huge dolly around. So it's very precise to capture a movie that feels like it's chaos being caught by accident. Impelex had a crew of six. Color Wheel was about 10 people. I mean, they were produced completely by force of determination. I mean, nobody wanted me to make them. Nobody was helping. Nobody was saying you really should be making these movies. It was just me getting the least amount of money possible and then saying to everybody I know, will you be, if I'm writing a movie, will you be in it for two days and will you be in it and will you help me make it? And it's just telling people I'm going to make a movie in June and then every week making sure that you're making the movie in June because nobody wants you to make it, nobody cares. <clears throat> Nobody's waiting for it to be finished. It's just up to you. Once you get lucky enough to have real producers, certainly real well-known actors, um, people want you to make the movie. They want you to succeed. Once you are in a position where you're not producing your own movies by yourself, now you have producers who want to produce a movie. They want to see it get made. They want to watch it. They want to support it. So now you have other people helping you push the stone up the hill, whereas previously it's just me. It's a much bigger stone, but there's a lot more people. And now once you have actors, 
you know, as soon as a, an actor who you want to be in your movie says yes, you're making the movie, or else the whole thing just fails. Someone like Jonathan Price, I mean, he's just, he's, he's an actor. He loves to act. He'll do a play, and then he'll do a small role in a huge movie, and then he'll come be a big role in a small movie. Someone like that only cares about the part and the challenge. Uh, and then he'll go be on Game of Thrones for three years, and he's doing that. And then he'll go do Shakespeare in between seasons of Game of Thrones. And, you know, real actors like him, you know, been doing it for 50 years. All he cares about is what is the role? Do I trust the people I'm working with? And then somebody like Emily, who's 25 years old when I first met her, She's been in these big movies, and she's been on these six-month location shoots. And like a lot of actors, these things have their advantages, but everybody knows a big special effects movie, the focus is not on the acting, it's on the apparatus of $100 million being spent. So she's excited to come make a movie in Brooklyn for three weeks where she can speak in her natural accent, and she can wear her own clothes sometimes, and play a character that's very real and very human, where the only emphasis on most days of filming is putting a camera right in her face and having her act, rather than putting her on a horse or in a rig or makeup or anything. And it's just, it's just doing the work. Certainly the freedom is valuable, and but you know, there's degrees of independence. I'm very lucky that with a movie like Her Smell, you know, which is the most mo money I've ever had for a budget, um, still complete freedom to spend that money however we felt was best without a producer leaning over and saying, actually, this is the right way to spend it. Even at a, an independent level with slightly more resources, we might have been working with people that said, the contract says 120, you have to make the movie 120 minutes. And then the whole conceit of the movie would be ruined because then the scenes don't take place in real time anymore. It's not just being independent, it's being independent with essentially complete control to do everything, not the way I want it, but just the right way. It's, you know, I've made six movies. I know what is correct. I know the correct amount of days. I know the correct amount of crew. I know the correct amount of time that I need. I know the correct amount of money for this department or that department. So it's not just that it's independent, it's that people trust me when I say I know what I'm doing. This movie was so satisfying to make and to build and to put together. The only challenge is, you know, how can I find that again? What is as exciting? How can I create something that is as much of a challenge to the art department that built me these sets, and to the hair and makeup department that designed these women, and to the wardrobe department, and to the lighting that created these crazy looks, and to the camera department that had, you know, four different styles. And like, how can I think of a movie that gives each one of these people that I love collaborating with an even bigger challenge? And then how can I make sure that I have the amount of resources necessary to let them succeed? I don't know.